guys, uh, this week I'm going to be doing a new Ancients tutorial for you because I was kind of thinking the other day, wow, it's been a while since I painted any Ancients, so maybe it's about time. And so that's what I'm going to be doing for you this week. Uh, I have picked out a sort of a Hellenistic Macedonian type unit, which is what I'm going to be painting because that is actually one of my favorite ancient armies to do. Uh, when I got started at, in wargaming, it was kind of the first thing I worked on. I've got about 2,000 points for a Macedonian Wild Army, actually. I hardly ever do anything with it anymore, but, you know, it's there if I want to play with it. Uh, and I think the reason I really enjoy these Hellenistic armies is because from, for a painter, I mean, they're great. Um, they're brightly colored, they have ornate, interesting equipment, and when you're building an army, there's a lot of different possibilities. You know, you're not just stuck painting the same thing over and over again, like with some kind of barbarian or Germanic army. You can have all different kinds of units in one army, because those Hellenistic armies really drew from all over the ancient world. So you get tired of one thing. You can always paint something else. So, from that perspective, they're a lot of fun, and that's probably why I sort of gravitated towards them. Now, the figure <coughs> I have specifically that I'm going to be doing today is from Aventine Miniatures. This is, I think, it's it could be any sort of Hellenistic general or officer figure, but I think this one is specifically meant to be Pyrrhus of Epirus. Uh, you can kind of tell by the horns on his helmet because he was famous for that. But, you know, like I said, you can get information or inspiration for whatever Hellenistic unit you're working on from this. Uh, I've already base coated him and painted his skin just to save a little bit of time. These Aventine miniature figures tend to be on the heroic kind of beefy side which is also great as far as I'm concerned because I like painting that kind of figure as you probably heard before. Uh, this tutorial is going to be another great one for bright colors. I'm definitely going to be putting a lot of purple onto this guy, which is a new thing. I don't think I've done, uh, I haven't done any figures yet that really have any uh, measurable amount of purple on them, so that should be interesting if you're in, into that. And also I'm going to be doing some yellow for you because that's another kind of color that kind of goes together because, you know, you had the companions, Alexander's companions were famous for their purple and yellow cloaks. And I'm going to work in a lot of other bright colors because the, the armor that these guys wore, it really was brilliantly colored from what we can tell. Purples, reds, greens, blues, as many different colors, preferably in one uh, uniform as possible. So this guy is going to be just really bright and really a lot of fun to paint. I think as well. And of course he's also got a lot of uh, metal armor on which is going to be, you know, bronze, gold, silver, which is going to be really blingy. So there's going to be a fair amount of metal painting going on as well. So let's just go and get started. Okay, I'm going to start out by painting the Terragis on this model because they're easiest to do right now. And I've already decided that I want them to be sort of a blue and yellow alternating pattern. So I'm going to do the blue here first, and I'm applying a base coat of Vallejo uh, Prussian Blue as my first layer. And then I'm going to add the yellow tarragies, and as you can see, they're going to be alternating every other one with the blue tarragies. And at the bottom where there's two rows, I'm going to try to, you know, make sure that they alternate in such a way that the yellow is directly above the blue, and so on. The base coat I'm using for the yellow tarragies is going to be Foundry Ochre Shade. I'm next going to highlight the blue tarragies, and for this I am using a mixture of the Prussian blue and Vallejo Deep Sky Blue. Uh, to start out, it's not quite a 50-50 mix, it's a little on the darker side, so I'm going to apply the paint to the bottom and blend upwards so it stays darker at the top, and I'm going to make sure that the Prussian blue stays down in the deep cracks between the fabric strips so there's a good defining line there later on. Once I've applied that, I'm then going to make a high highlight color just by mixing even more of that deep sky blue in, as you can see, to get a, just a lighter color. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to apply at the bottom and blend up, but I'm just going to be a little bit more sparing about it and not blend it up as far so that that lighter color is just, there's less of it and it's more towards the bottom. 
And now I'm gonna sort of repeat that process except on the yellow tarragese. And I'm gonna use um, Foundry Ochre Medium as the medium highlight shade for these. And I, you can see I'm really just applying it pretty much to the entire strip of fabric and just leaving a little of the dark color at the edges and the top. Once I've gone and done that, I'm gonna create a high highlight color by taking that um, ochre medium and mixing it with some Foundry Boneyard Light. And my goal there is gonna be kind of to create sort of a, I don't know, a butter color basically. And I'm gonna be applying that towards the bottom of the tarragese and sort of along the edges, just as before, trying to, you know, be a little bit more sparing with my color application. Now, the tarragese also have fringes, but we're gonna come back to those later. I wanna do some other areas that are sort of lower down in terms of the sculpting because it'll just be easier to worry about that now. So that means I'm gonna be moving on to the purple areas of the figure, which are going to be his cloak, obviously, and I've decided also to make his tunic purple. So to base coat these areas, I am going to be taking a mixture of Vallejo Royal Purple, of course, Royal Purple, what else? and some German camouflage black brown. Yeah, I know it sounds very dark and strange to mix that really deep brown in, but I want to make sure the base color for the purple is a very, very dark color because I want this model to be really high contrast because that just looks really nice on these ancient figures and especially when you've got a big area of fabric like this cloak, having a big, big difference in contrast is gonna be just way more interesting and spectacular. So just apply that paint to all those areas carefully and just try not to get it on the parts that you've already painted. And now I'm gonna kind of begin the laborious process of highlighting this cloak particularly. The tunic areas are quite are relatively small, so they're not a big deal, but the cloak is quite a lot of work. This is a place where you really have to get, you know, good at blending if you want to get good results. The first color I'm going to be applying over my base is going to be plain old royal purple. I haven't mixed it into anything, and you can see that I'm applying it definitely to all the sharp creases and full, higher folds but I'm also putting it sort of down in between those creases, but then I'm kind of blending it out a little bit to make sure that that really deep purple still stays in the darkest areas at the base of those creases, and then on the inner part of the cloak, you know, towards his body, where there, you'd expect there to be a lot of shadow. But generally speaking, you can be pretty generous with this first uh, dark purple highlight. So now the basic process I'm going to follow, having applied that first layer of royal purple, is to add progressively lighter highlights to my cloak by mixing a bit of uh, Foundry Boneyard Light into the purple and just adding progressively more for each layer. And it doesn't have to be on your light. It can be any sort of cream base color. I would not use white for this because it'll give an undesirable kind of grayish cast when you're done. I, you, want, you want to use a warm color, a, a cream, something with a little yellow in it, preferably. So as you can see, I'm just going to uh, start out applying this light and purple and uh, blending it outward. Always apply it first to the tops of folds and creases and then blend it outwards where that's necessary. So you can see I'm, I'm putting it on the creases and then blending it outwards and then I'm just going to basically keep repeating this process so once I've applied that I'm going to add a little bit more of the cream to get it lighter. I'm going to apply it again to those high airs but it just each time I'm going to be blending it out a little bit less and leaving it more and more just focused on the highest areas of fabric and you know just putting less and less of it down in the recess areas and and, and you just you just keep repeating that and the more layers you make this way the better the effect will be but you know you have to kind of decide for yourself you know how far you want to go I think I probably applied three or four different shades where I added progressively more of the boneyard to my purple. 
but you know, you could do even more, you could do less, and you would still get good results. I did an army like this a year or two ago, and I really only did it really with three colors, and I left the color transitions a lot more blocky. And you can do that too, and for practical army building purposes, that'll also look pretty good. But if you want a nice general figure like this, uh, and you really want the cloak to look smooth and have a lot of contrast, uh, it, it pays to take your time and, uh, you know, really makes uh, three or four multiple shades and sort of blend them together. And yeah, you're going to get, you're going to get a, a nice, subtle effect this way. Now it's known from ancient descriptions that um, Alexander and his companions wore these purple cloaks with yellow borders around the bottom. Now Pyrrhus, of course, was not one of Alexander's companions, but we can assume that other Hellenistic nobles and royalty probably would have wanted to emulate that style, or, or maybe they, maybe they, not probably, but they may have emulated that style because, you know, Alexander was really popular and everyone wanted to copy him around that time. So what I'm doing here is applying my border using Foundry Ochre Shade, and this is just the base coat, so just put a, a fairly thick line down and try to, you know, just make sure that it's more or less even. I'm then going to highlight that border using more or less the same colors I use in the yellow tarragies. So I'm starting here with Foundry Ochre Medium and I'm going to apply it to all of the tops of all the creases basically and sort of blend it out from there. Also you can see kind of the areas in between the creases a little bit, though a little bit thinner in those parts. Uh, you mostly don't, just don't want it kind of at the bases of the creases at this point. Once that's done, I'm going to make a higher highlight in the same way I did before by mixing some Boneyard Light in there to get a kind of a butter color. And once again, same thing, apply it to the highest creases, blend it outwards, uh, just be a little bit more sparing and it's pretty straightforward and then I in this case I made because this area is larger than on the tarragies and I want there to be even more contrast I made an even higher shade by mixing even more of that boneyard and then just applying it really to only the tops of the folds in the cloak with the cloak done I'm going to return to the tarragies and finish the fringe details at the bottom because now seems like a good time to clean that up. I'm going to make all of the fringes white. So I'm going to start out by first base coating all of them using Foundry Stone Light. And because the fringe areas are sm so small, highlight the, highlighting them is pretty quick. I've taken some thin down white here and I'm just going to apply it sort of following the sculpting, so putting, applying the white to just the fringes, kind of dragging downwards as you can see and being sure to leave uh, a dark line in between the separate uh, pterogies because you really want that to be well delineated. Since my white is kind of thinned down here, once I've applied an initial layer, I'll go back in with the white again and apply extra towards the bottom of the tarragies just to get that brighter and whiter and build up some extra color and definition on that sort of bottom area. Now to get some really, really nice contrast going, I'm going to paint um, Pyrrhus's sash and his helmet a beautiful bright red color. We're not entirely sure that this is the case, but there's some reasonably good evidence that people in the Hellenistic period uh, painted their helmets. Uh, and we don't, as I said, we don't know for sure, but if you do it, it does make for a really spectacular and interesting colorful effect. So I'm definitely going to be doing it here. So I'm base coating all these areas here using Vallejo Black Red so that I have a nice deep base color and I can really build up some good contrast. Then I'm going to take a Citadel Mephiston Red and start uh, layering that over top. And with the sash particularly, I'm going to be careful to leave some of that dark red 
to help define the separate pieces of fabric. And I'm going to layer it a bit, so I'm going to apply it one layer, blend it out, and then build it up a little stronger in other areas. And on the helmet, of course, you can see, you want to make sure that deep red stays around the edges a little bit. If it doesn't, no big deal. You can always go back in and fine line it later. But, you know, if you can make it, do it neatly now, that's just a little bit easier. And then finally, I'm going to add a final red highlight of Evil Sun Scarlet that's also from Citadel. And I'm going to apply it sort of to the highest areas of color once again and blend outwards from there. Always apply to the area you want lightest and blend outwards. And this is a fairly transparent layer color from Citadel, so you may want to apply it in some areas that you want really bright. You may need to apply it uh, in a couple layers just to get enough brightness and and contrast. This is the part where everything is really going to start coming together and looking really nice because I'm going to start working on the metal areas. So I want to do the bronze and gold first, which include, in this case, his breastplate, uh, the fittings on his sword and scabbard, and sort of the trim on his helmet, as you will see. I have mixed a base coat for those areas using German camouflage uh, black brown as usual and some Vallejo Air gold and there should be of course as usual and that makes much more of the brown than of the gold at this point. Now since we've already painted a lot of areas including that sash and the like and the red on the helmet you're going to need to apply this base coat a little bit more carefully than usual because you don't want it getting on your, the work you've already done and making a mess. Now because the, I have some relatively large areas of metal here and I want to maintain a fairly subtle effect, my next layer is going to be um, that base color but then with a bit more gold mixed into it. Normally I would go straight to just pure Vallejo Air Gold but at this point I want to make a transitional color because especially on the breastplate I don't want the transition to appear too stark. And then I am indeed going to take just pure Vallejo Air Gold and apply it to the lightest areas and then sort of blend outward from there, of course, where there's sort of these sort of edges and details. You want to apply it all along those and just leave that nice dark color down in the recesses to help uh, delineate and define. And then finally, as always, I'm going to add a high highlight to my uh, gold and bronze by taking the Vallejo Air Gold and making, mixing in some Vallejo Air Silver and then applying that very, very sparingly sort of to some, uh, to some sharp edges and some corners. And so you can see I'm really, especially on the helmet, using it as an edge highlight here, and a, li a little bit more even, but then just very subtly and blending it outwards. And this is going to give our, um, our general, the real, you know, bling factor that you would kind of expect to see on his equipment. Now Paris also has a sort of, mm, I don't know, laurel wreath, I guess, sculpted onto his helmet. And I've decided I'm going to make that look silver. So I am base coating those areas now using a mixture of Vallejo, uh, German gray and Vallejo silver. Obviously, you want to make it more dark gray than anything else at this point. Uh, I'm then going to mix a bit more silver into that to get a lighter shade, and I'm going to layer that on sort of the more um, high areas of color, basically. And yeah, and just continue like that. And then finally, I'm going to just take the pure Vallejo Air Silver and apply that very sparingly to the tips and tops of the leaves, things like that, to get that really nice shiny effect. And then finally, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go back in, I'm going to take a Citadel Blue Wash, and I'm going to apply that very lightly to the whole wreath. And that's going to sort of, that bluish cast that we're going to get is going to be more reminiscent of silver. And it's also going to help delineate better all the grooves down 
inside those leaves that kind of can get lost because they're so small when you're painting them. And once that's dry, if you want, you can also go back in and re-highlight the highest areas with the bright silver because, of course, that blue wash can cause you to lose a little bit of that really high shine that you want on a really fancy helmet like this with a lot of silver. And now for the leather areas of the uniform, which I admit are a little bit tedious because painting these huge boots is kind of a pain in the ass. And he's got kind of huge clown feet, this particular sculpt. But anyway, I want to paint the boots, um, his sword scabbard, and also his baldric where it shows. And I decided I was going to use kind of a nice red leather. It'd be kind of attractive here. Um, I'm going to be using the Foundry Conquer Brown Triad, but I wanted the base to be a little bit darker than the normal foundry color. So I have taken and mixed a bit of the German camouflage black brown into my base shade and I'm going to apply that all over the boots. And then I'm going to just highlight the boots using all of the other colors in the triad progressively. So I'm going to start out with the shade color which you can see is only slightly lighter than my base color but it adds a nice little red cast and I'm going to apply it pretty much everywhere and then I'm going to move on to the medium color, just applying it a little bit less, uh, blending it out, and basically doing the same thing with that lightest color in the triad. Now, there are sort of laces on these boots and sort of fringes at the top, sort of a, a strip, sort of a border strip as well. And when you're painting those, uh, you want to be a little bit careful. Don't get uh, the colors you're using down in all the uh, cracks between those elements. You want to make sure you keep that really dark base color there. That's very, very important. So be a little bit, take it a little bit easy there. When I get to the highest highlight color, I'm also going to sort of make a fine line around that, that sort of the edge of the area where the lacing is, sort of outline that, because on these boots that's really not very well defined, so it needs to be done using the paint. I've also made one final edge highlight color by mixing the Conquer brown light with a bit of boneyard light and this is going to be indeed applied as an edge highlight to all of those laces, the edges of all of the fringes and borders and around sort of the base of the soles and the tips of the toes just as an extra emphasis color and to help better define those sections. You can also run it sort of along the edges of your baldric and your scabbard to get, to get more definition there as well. Now, of course, we can't forget Paris's rather impressive horns. I am base coating these using uh, Foundry Stone Light again. And then once that's dry, I'm going to take the uh, Stone Light and I'm going to mix a bit of white into it. And I am going to apply that uh, from the tips of the horns going downward, sort of blending it out. So that what we're aiming for here is basically a gradient effect where we want to darker gray towards the base of the horns and have it getting progressively lighter as we go out. So I apply that layer, blend it out, then I add a little bit more white so it's lighter, apply it to the tips, blend it downwards, but a little less. Uh, do that two or three times, you kind of get the idea. And then the final highlight should just be pure white applied to the tips and blend it out a little bit. And this is actually what you see on real cows and sort of horns. They're, they're ten they tend to be very light at the tip and then sort of darker down towards the animal's head. So this is kind of a good realistic way to simulate that effect. Paris has a rather large and unrealistic crest on his helmet, but I, you know, I want to do it justice all the same. And I'm going to be painting kind of a yellowy cream color. Also, he has some ties on the front of his armor, which I'm going to do in the same color, so don't forget those. I am base coating all of this using uh, some Foundry Boneyard shade. Now to highlight the crest is a little bit involved just because it's a big area and it requires a fair amount of blending. What I'm going to be doing is taking the 
a bone yarn medium color and I'm going to what you're going to want to do is apply it from the top and blend it downwards okay and what you the easiest way when you've got a big area like this is to do some wet blending so you can see I'm applying it blending it downward and then I'm going to take that the foundry uh, boneyard shade color and apply it at the base again and blend it up so I'm applying them very quickly in sequence so the paint is still wet so I can sort of kind of move them back and forth and kind of blend them together and then I'm going to repeat the process using boneyard light applying it to the top and blending it down but then just with less but making sure the other the paint and the other layers is still wet so that I can mix it together very easily this is a little bit fiddly so you may find yourself needing to go back and forth a couple times before you get the effect you want and of course the top of the crest that is just going to be painted pretty much entirely in the boneyard light color because you'd expect it to be the lightest because yeah that's where the light's hitting and it's sort of the farthest away from the base I'm going to continue refining the crust, just kind of keep working on blending it. <clears throat> the one thing I'm going to do now is I'm going to take a seraphim sepia wash and I'm going to apply that to the base of the crust in a couple of layers, blending it up, and that's going to help better define the different um, lines and creases in the um, hairs and also get extra deep color down at the roots without uh, you know noticeably darkening the rest and I'm going to also apply that to the top of the crest so that I can get more dark color and down in all the little pits and holes that have been sculpted there and help emphasize that and once the wash is dry then I'm going to go back in with the boneyard light color and kind of overbrush the top of the crest particularly so that it gets light again but it doesn't go down in all of those holes that I just washed and I'm, I'm and I'm also going to do that a little bit more to the sides blending downwards but you know uh, per, still per, trying to preserve that that color that darker color down at the root, which is always going to be your goal. And you can see, I, I, this, just, this is just a little bit of a fiddly process that you just have to keep playing with it until you get kind of the right proportions, the right looking blend. And then once I've done this and I'm pretty much happy with the results, you know, I like the, how it's blended, how dark it is at the roots. I'm gonna finish off by taking some pure white and using that as an edge highlight around the sort of the top edge of the crest and sort of down at the, at the, at the end where it tr sort of trails off into long hairs. I'm going to emphasize that. Okay, so here is our uh, finished Pyrrhus of a Pyrrhus sculpture from Aventine Miniatures. Um, I hope you found this to be useful as always and you know I hope you got some extra ideas about painting purple here uh, it's not a particularly difficult color to do I mean not more than say red or a lot of other ones I think the real trick in this particular figure more than anything is the big cloak and all the real blending you have to do to get a good result and you know building up that real high contrast and that big uh, gradation and color and doing that effectively so the results are pleasant and subtle and I also know some of, of you have been asking how to do yellow well uh, so here is one solution for how to paint yellow this is obviously more of a faded lighter yellow color rather than a really brilliant uh, bright yellow color I will be covering that in the future as soon as I have a project that warrants that shade but uh, I, you know, I, I really, really love this period, the Hellenistic area. The figures are so colorful. They're really a joy to paint. And, you know, if you haven't done one before, I do hope you'll give it a try because there really are just, they're just really tons of fun. So as usual, if you enjoyed this video, uh, pr please like it. That really helps me. Uh, leave your comments share it with your friends or around the web, and of course you can subscribe if you haven't done so already. So until next week, as always, have fun painting.